In this section, we're going to implement 3D box counting to measure the fractality of a tumor volume. We start by downloading the datasets t2.dcm and truth.dcm and placing them on the same folder where we have created this notebook. Afterwards, we use the command set directory notebook directory to make the files accessible without specifying the full paths. We load the brain MRI T2 volume that's an icon file by calling the command import on the string t2.dcm. So here's the output. We can see the brain slices in the MRI volume and also a blank artifact on the last image slices that it would be good to eliminate. We can select the non-null elements of T2 by reassigning the variable to the first 160 slices. In Mathematica, images are stored by default in RGB. We can take this opportunity to change the representation of the T2 data to a grayscale, which saves memory. We lose some information by doing this, but in this case, it's not relevant because we're not going to do color computation on the T2 data. We're just going to explore it with manipulate. We assign an index i from 1 to 160 that increments in the steps of 1. We define the initial image slice as being 101 and we define the label slice for the control. This letter here allows us to inspect the different slices in the brain volume. However, as I told you, we're not going to do computation on the T2 dataset. We're going to use the truth dataset to perform our box counting calculations. We start by importing the truth dataset and converting it to grayscale as we did to the T2 volume. When inspecting it with manipulate, one can notice that it's the exact same brain that we had on the T2 dataset, but it's already segmented. We have distinct labels for every tumor and edema voxel. We see them as these pure gray levels that are shared throughout the whole volume. Each gray level represents a distinct class of tissue. To create a 3D brain, we pass the truth volume slices to image3D. We specify a byte data type to save memory because, once again, we're not doing advanced color processing. The shape of the tumor is well preserved in this dataset while using a byte type. Well, here's the output. There's something odd about it, isn't it? Due to the order and alignment of the slices, the brain is upside down. We can correct this using image reflect. You can see that it gives us the brain volume on its natural alignment. However, there's still an artifact, a wasteful artifact on the image. This is all this gray empty space that surrounds the brain. It occupies memory. We can eliminate it using image crop. Now we have a more economical representation of the same data. I want to show you the relative position of the tumor and edema inside the brain. And for that, we need to assign transparency and color to the tumor and edema voxels. As I mentioned earlier, in the truth dataset, all tumor voxels share a label as a gray level and the same thing happens with the edema voxels. We're going to find out what these gray levels are in order to assign transparency and color to the tumor and edema inside the brain. We start by looking at a single slice in the truth dataset. We can use the coordinates tool on this slice to get indices for tumor and edema. We can point at them and take note of their XY coordinates. 
In fact, we only need a single point for each. And a curious thing is that here we see gray levels as integers. But we're not going to use it directly in order to highlight a difference in representation between what you see here as the value of the gray level using the coordinates tool and what is seen when one calls image data on the same XY coordinates. The gray level that we read with the coordinates tool was a byte integer. However, the gray level that we read using image data is a float between 0 and 1. You can check that these float values are equal to the gray levels found with the coordinates tool if you divide the byte integer values by 255. Once we know the gray levels for tumor and edema, we can assign colors and transparency to them by defining rules for color function that we can see here as RGB alpha specifications. Using the function which, we assign a red color to tumor voxels, a yellowish color to edema, and a blue transparent color to everything else in the brain. By defining a viewpoint, we specify an XYZ coordinate for the camera used to look at the volume. You can play and modify this to get different views on the brain. This is the one we get with this definition. Knowing the relative size and position of a tumor is valuable when planning treatment. And we're going to estimate the tumor's rugosity too which has been proposed as a factor to assess its malignancy. The analysis of fertility has been proposed as a reproducible computational approach to assess tumor type, malignancy, and rate of growth. We already performed qualitative exploration of a glioma. Now we're going to estimate its rugosity using box counting. In order to perform box counting, we need to isolate the tumor first. To isolate the tumor, we look into its coordinates in the truth file, using the known gray value for tumor. We're going to use these tumor coordinates to create a new volume. However, we can't simply pass these coordinates into image 3D. We need to remap them into a sparse array. Inside this call to sparse array, we call thread and define a rule assigning the value 1 to all tumor coordinates. We then pass a color function as a second parameter to image 3D. I use red with a high value of alpha here, but you can experiment using other colors. In order to perform box counting, we need to ignore the internal mass of the tumor. We only need its shell, its surface, and to get this, we call edge detect on the volume. To illustrate that the tumor is without internal mass, I call clip range on it, eliminating a portion. You can see here that it's empty, it's only a shell. To perform box counting, we need to divide the shell volume into cubes. We do this division using image partition that receives as first parameter the volume and as second parameter the size of the side of the dividing cube. Here I am illustrating the number of cubes that we get when using the max box size that we'll test on the algorithm. We get more cubes with a smaller size for the cube, as you can see here. This is a key feature that will influence the estimation of fractality with box counting. We define this utility function extract data from boxes that will divide the edge image of the volume in a defined box size. Inside extract data from boxes, we use Flayden to convert the list of lists output of cubes from image partition into a single list on which we will apply image data. Applying image data with map to the list of cubes will give us a list of numerical elements for each cube. 
The cubes that are empty, the ones without edge elements, will be populated by zeros in this list. We define the function box counting that receives the edge image and initial size for the box, a maximum size, and the increment between iterations. You can see that these last three parameters are used in the call to parallel table, which is our iterator function. This call to parallel table can be replaced by a call to table, and it won't affect the behavior of the algorithm. The call to parallel table is an optimization that exploits the natural parallelization capabilities of functional programming in Mathematica. We map the function sign to the result from extract data from boxes in order to convert to one all the non-null boxes. We then apply total to add these boxes. We can see that the result of parallel table is a double with this total and one divided by the box size using the current iteration. This division is done to create the log log plot to estimate the fractal dimension later. We save the results of box counting in the variable log results. You can see how the number of box elements that contain part of the edge of the tumor is lower when we increase the box size. In order to estimate the fractal dimension, we need to perform a linear regression on the log log plot of these pairs of values. We call the logarithm function on log results and then call fit to perform a linear regression on the points. The estimated fractal dimension with box counting is the coefficient of the x. You can see that it's 2.17, which is higher than the topological dimension of a sphere so we made a sensible estimation for the rugosity of the tumor. However, one of the big faults of the box counting method is that we can have a value that's lower than 2 here using different minimum and maximum box sizes, and I invite you to try to find them.